As I mentioned before, the SCR274N the, the, with the uh, silver aluminum chassis unpainted uh, and the Navy sets, the, the ARC-5s, are, are different. Uh, physically, um, they look very similar, but the uh, rear plug where the power goes in is wired differently, so be very careful when you're going from one set to the other. The, uh, the pinout is not identical. The other interesting thing is in the Navy version they use a choke and capacitor coupling to the output tank, so the tank is actually cold to the B+. In the uh, 274 version the tank is hot with B+, so that's an interesting variation uh, between the two sets. All I can think is one of the engineers along the line got a shock and decided to add the choke and the capacitor uh, for safety. Uh, let's take a look at the roller inductor. The roller inductor is a prominent feature in the front. This is the main tank coil. Um, this cowl covers the VFO tank. And the uh, take a little peek at the front panel. Front panel of this ARC-5. We have the uh, tuning control down below. By the way, all of these controls can be locked. Here's the adjustment for the roller inductor. Here's your coupling control. This one's locked, so I'll unlock it. You can adjust your coupling. And between the coupling control and the roller inductor, this thing will basically load into almost anything, even a 15 or 20 foot piece of wire. Uh, there's an antenna post. Uh, the antenna post, uh, simply put the, the trailing wire into that post. Uh, there is a keying relay and an antenna relay. This is the antenna relay. Transmit, receive. Uh, the receive condition grounds the output of the transmitter, which is interesting. Uh, apparently they didn't want any RF coming out of this thing, so they ground the output when you're in receive mode. There's also a keying relay. This is what applies uh, plus 250 volts to the oscillator, while uh, the other set of contacts ground the cathodes of the finals, simultaneously keying up the oscillator, grounding the cathode of the finals, the transmitter is on the air. By adjusting these contacts critically, you can turn the oscillator on slightly before the amplifiers are keyed and get a pretty good keying out of this, uh, out of the transmitter. So you might ask yourself, how do I know if I've got a good one? And what are some of the things that I might run across when I pick these things up? Typically, um, if you do find they've been modified, they will have the conversion right out of the handbook, the one I discussed. And that conversion uh, basically instructed the uh, the, uh, the prospective novice or the uh, the Elmer that's helping the novice to drill a hole to mount a key jack on the front panel and see the hole has been drilled on this on this arc five for a standard quarter inch key jack and uh, the way they ran that transmitter in the conversion article in the handbook was. Uh, the oscillator would be turned on along with the antenna relay and you would be in the transmit mode with the oscillator running all the time. You would key only the finals. So there would be quite a back wave uh, as you were using the transmitter. There would be a slight tone that you would hear in the background. That's called back wave. And it was the few milliwatts that were able to make their way to the antenna. So the person would say, hey, I hear your back wave. Um, conditions must be very good today because uh, basically the transmission of uh, 50 or 60 milliwatts of back wave was a good indication that the band was in good shape. Uh, this, this did kind of drive people crazy and uh, one of the uh, ways of overcoming this would be to key the rig as originally designed, that is to key the oscillator along with the amplifier. The problem there is uh, these rigs, especially without uh, proper regulation, did tend to chirp quite a bit. So that was not so popular. Plus, uh, 
You can imagine what a clanging relay sounds like in one of these rigs. It would drive you crazy sending CW for any length of time with that relay clanging. So another part of the article was to remove the relays from the set. So typically you'll find the set will be uh, uh, also given a nice SO239 connector up here in place of the, uh, the porcelain and uh, push type connector, you're going to get an SO239. So I can tell already this transmitter probably has the, the handbook conversion. This is a, uh, a BC459A. It covers from 7 to uh, 9.1 megahertz. So this is a 40 meter job. Now, um, notice the top is missing one of its covers and the and the rear cover obviously was scavenged off another transmitter. You're going to find this kind of thing. Uh, transmitter is not in bad shape on top. The roller inductor is there. Uh, the, uh, the main tank coil is there. This looks in pretty good shape actually. Oh, this is a bonus. Uh, one thing that the article uh, told you to, to do right off the bat was to take off the military transmitter uh, connector that's on the back. This thing is made to go into a rack where this would just blind mate into a connector and to replace that with an octal tube socket and that would become the uh, power socket for the radio. This has not been done on this radio so the guy probably was uh, uh, didn't want to go that far and he knew all his contacts were there so he simply left that intact. So that's, uh, that's a good find. The next thing we're going to look at is under the hood to see what's been done. Okay, yeah, we've got a surprise here. This guy is clean as a whistle inside. It's been completely stripped of all parts, ready for some complete conversion that somebody was going to do, apparently. There's nothing inside at all except for the variable capacitors used for the VFO and for the uh, power amplifier tank. So this is a good candidate to get a complete uh, conversion, but it never will be restorable. Um, it's, it's got too many holes in it. It's got the two holes here. It's got the connector that's been soldered and damaged. It's probably not a candidate for restoration, but it would be a candidate to put on the air. Now from a practical standpoint, you may be asking, uh, can we really use these transmitters on the air today? Uh, the answer is yes, we can. Uh, we, can uh, we can use the 80 meter uh, version, the BC696, or the T19 which covers 3 to 4 megahertz. Uh, it has pretty good band spread. Uh, certainly we can use it in the 3.5 to 3.6 megahertz region for CW on 80 meters. And it will work fine. Uh, the 40 meter version covers 7 to 9. It tunes a little bit fast, but uh, it also is usable on 40 meters. So I would consider these two to be usable should you be unlucky and not able to get a, a transmitter that is in the ham bands, for instance, you get a, a 4 to 5.3 megahertz transmitter, by, by taking the, the 4 to 5.3 and closing the capacitor so that you have almost fully meshed plates, you'll be able to cover uh, the 80 meter band uh, with that transmitter. Now the dial won't read correctly, but it actually will be a very nice transmitter and you can get it to, to operate on 80 meters. The same is true of the 5.3 to 7 megahertz model. By opening this capacitor, we can bring the VFO into the bottom of the 40 meter uh, CW band. There are many conversion articles that allow you to uh, operate on 20 meters, 15 meters, 10 meters, 6 meters, whatever. Those are well beyond the scope of uh, the simple conversion we're going to talk about and would involve all kinds of modifications to the basic transmitter. You can refer to some of the uh, some of the surplus magazines of the 50s and early 60s if you if you're interested in doing that type of conversion. And let me reiterate: if you have a pristine example uh, where the pain is good, there have been no modifications whatsoever. Do not modify. Do not drill holes. Uh, the set is worth a lot more, and really should not be tampered with. But if you have one that's full of holes and all kinds of ham radio modifications have been done over the years, have at it, have fun, let's get these things on the air. 
In the next video, we're going to pretend that we have one that we just picked up off eBay or at a ham flea market, and we are going to go through it, and we're going to clean it up and do all the prerequisite things that you need to do to one of these before you ever attempt to put it on the air.